Welcome to Photoshop Elements Weekly. This is show number six. And in this show, we're going to be talking about installing and using actions to automate your workflow. We're also going to be talking about color variations. And we're going to look at using a layer mask to relocate people or objects without doing any selection at all. I think you'll be pretty interested in it. So let's go and get started with this week's show with Photoshop Elements Weekly. Thanks, Ted, for throwing that in there. Every time I do that, every time I play one of those openers or a commercial break, I lose the audio. Uh, if I'm not watching, um, that tends to happen. So hopefully you guys should have me right back here again. Uh, thanks, Ted, again for popping that in there real quick. That was great. Um, I see that the uh, Twitter message went out. And if you guys want to uh, tweet that out a few more times for me there, if you have Twitter open, if you have a Twitter account, you can post that out there for me. And like I said, this week, um, it's a pretty, pretty full show, I think. I think you'll be interested to see what we have coming up here for you. And uh, these topics are um, are pretty interesting. I actually worked with them this morning, and uh, I think we got a, a decent show here. So we are going to uh, get underway. Um, and the first thing we're going to look at here, like I said, is installing actions. And um, what actions are, and we're going to learn how to install those. Now I'm going to show you on the on the Mac how to install those, but don't run away because we do have the Windows uh, XP and Windows 7 and Vista um, actually uh, help documents typed up for you, so it's really easy to follow. I don't think you'll have any problems at all uh, putting these into your Photoshop elements. So okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here, and let me see where we're going here first. First, I'll tell you where I found these actions at. Uh, let's bring up my uh, computer here. I found these actions at this website. This is the Texas Chicks uh, Blogs and Picks. Now, where that name ever came from, I don't really know. But um, that is where it came from. And the um, this, this gentleman here wrote some free actions. Now, what's an action? An action is just something that we use to allow us to automate a process, right? That's an action. And his automated processes are pretty amazing. Um, I know back in my videos there, you can look back through the archives on YouTube, and you're going to find some stuff about um, uh, doing reflections. And that's what we're going to work on today, actually, is doing a reflection. But we're going to do it with an action, uh, and it makes it so easy to do. So what you want to do is go to his website, and you're going to subscribe to his newsletter. It says subscribe to download free actions. Now his website, um, I don't know if I can bring this up and put this up in the show here or not so you guys can see it and download it. Uh, let's see here, we can copy that out there. Um, let me see if I can bring this up somewhere and put this in for you guys. Um, because I want it to be actually over top of this one. But uh, now let me see if I can just bring it up here real quick and throw it in here. Um, I want you to be able to see this uh, real fast here, how this works. And uh, we'll, we'll throw this in here and get this title up for you. Uh, let's see here. Maybe we'll just stick it there. Let's see here if we can paste it in. Um, hopefully you can see this. Um, yeah, there you go. I think that'll be fine. Okay. So, we'll bring this one up. And there you have it. There's the actual website. Uh, it's Texas Chickens Blog. Texas Chicks Blog and Picks.com. Um, we do have it up on the screen there for you now, so you can actually see it. And um, you'll be able to go to the website here and follow along as we do this. That way you can actually uh, watch this uh, vidcast or watch this live stream 
and you can actually be able to um, download this software too. So first go to the website and go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. It says subscribe to download the free actions. Click on that and subscribe. Once you do that, you're going to receive an email and it's going to say, it's going to come from the chicks. Now you got to sometimes be careful with your spam filters because sometimes a spam filter can pick that up as something else, um, but it's C-H-I-C-K-S and you're going to receive it and you're going to start to, uh, you're going to see these here is what you're going to see. Let me try to bring these up on the screen a little bit. These are the actual actions here. Um, and as soon as you subscribe and get this email, you can just follow along with me here. Um, hopefully everybody's just uh, staying right up there with me. But we have uh, the oil painting technique. We have drop shadow. Lab color boost. Oh, the drama. Noise reducer. Perfect workflow. Reflection action. And defog defog action pack and then five layers of sharpening now the only one I'm going to play with today and they all install the same way so installing it won't be a problem for you what we want to do here is we are going to go ahead and go to the reflection action that's the one we're going to download and install now when you bring this up it, it's going to tell you here uh, this action runs on Photoshop's 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, on XP, Vista, and it says it probably works on the Mac also. Uh, well, it does. I tested it this morning and it does work on the Mac. And what it creates here is a very, very nice reflection. You can see the girl here, and that's going to have a very nice reflection here in the bottom. So you download the actions by clicking on his picture, he kind of hides them from you. And then we'll go right here to installing the action. So let's download it first. And I'm sure you guys know uh, pretty much how to download, right? So we're going to download this action first. I'm going to save the file. And I like keeping everything on my computer here. Now this is the this is a Mac, all right? Um, if you have Windows, it's, it's pretty much the same anymore. I tell people they are they work so closely together. Go to the Mac software, right here. And then we're going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this Elements. And then I'm going to create a folder in there called Actions. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and download that DB Moms Reflections number two. And we're going to save that out. I then get a little box like this. Um, I can just right click on here if you're using a Mac, guys. And you can just click on Show and Finder. Uh, it's usually easier to do it that way. I can close this one. I can close this. Now the only thing we got to do here is we are going to unzip this. Again, in a PC, if you right click, you can right click on it, right, and go to uncompress. Uh, just so you guys know, you can go to uncompress. But here we can actually uh, right click on it, go to open with archive utility. Once again, that's on the Mac. So on XP or Windows 7, it says uncompress, and you can just uncompress that file. Um, I don't have my Windows 7 machine open right now, but that's all right. Now you can get this folder right here, and if you open this folder up, these are the files that we want to copy, and we're going to move around right here. So on your PC, it's going to be the same, okay? Very much the same on the PC. Let me move that up. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to click on Installing Actions in Photoshop Elements. And he did a very, very good write-up. It's very easy to follow along. There's a few steps that we have to go through to do these. But look at this, how he has this set up. Installing Actions Photoshop Elements 9 on Windows 7, Windows XP, on the Mac, on Vista. Vista and 7 are pretty close hand-in-hand. -hand. Um, then install Actions using the Action Player. So, and I haven't even looked at that one, how to do it. I did it by hand. Um, but if you click on here on the Action Player, um, you can do it this way too. You can download. and You're still going to have to move some files around, it looks like. But um, So, the way I like to do it, let's go back. The way I did it this morning um, is to 
move the files around and copy them. That's what I did this morning. Oh, there we go. I hope I don't go too far back. Um, you can tell there the uh, the stream slows my internet down just a little bit and uh, makes it drag just a little bit there. Okay. So now I am installing on a Mac, so I'll go here. You guys follow along and install on whatever system you're installing on. And uh, we're going to uh, bring this up. And it says, first of all, you copy the files into this folder. And this is just a folder tree. Uh, even if you're not familiar with computers, it's very easy to follow along. Um, I'll show you how I drill down on the Mac here to get to here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is select all these. I'm going to right click on it and copy. Copy the three items. I never like to cut because when you cut, if you make a mistake, you lose it. At least if you copy, you can find it again. You know where it's at. So now we go to the, I'll go anyway, if you're on a Mac, to the Macintosh hard drive, right? Um, some other folks here may actually go into, um, you know, you're going to my computer. Close this up. Close this. And what we're looking for here now is system library. Now I found that uh, under system, I think, and then library. That's where it's at. Now when you go into there, you want to find, or so now we're in application support, and we are looking for Adobe. Uh, let's see here where we're at. Nope, maybe I went in the wrong one again. I you know this happens. It's a live show. It does happen occasionally. Um, go into library. Library. Application support. So it was in the first library. So if you're on a Mac, don't go in the system. Go into, like I said, I don't know why the Mac has two libraries. Library, application support, Adobe. It's right there. Photoshop Elements, so we're going to go down here, look for Photoshop Elements, right here. I am currently using version 9, so that's what I'm going to work on, version 9, right here. And, at that point, we are going to drill into, that's version 9, we are looking for Photo Creations, right? And then Photo Effects, that's what we're looking for right here. Photo Effects. I like to put it more in this mode just because it's easier to right click in here and then just paste your items. All right. Now, anytime we add anything to Photoshop elements on your computer, the database has to rebuild. And the reason that is, is because the database itself is where all these effects and everything or where Photoshop elements, when it opens, it looks at that database and says, hey, what do you have to offer me? So we have to rebuild that database and make sure these new these new actions get put into that database. Now, how do we do that? Well, and like I said, I've done some YouTube videos before about adding uh, different types of things like that, uh, actions, and we've added some um, uh, some gradients and such. So that is how we would uh, come back out here. We're going to jump out of here, and you just follow the bottom one here. And on on the Windows, it's going to be the same type of deal, right? We're going to go into go back. And here we go into that same folder, library action support or application support, Adobe Photoshop Elements, and then nine. We go into local, go into US, and in here there's a database right here. It's called metadatabase db underscore three. Now, a lot of people will tell you to delete this. Don't delete it. What you want to do is right click on it, or actually, you can just click on it, right? And we could just put an underscore one, hit enter. Now at that time you can actually close that window out. That is the database file. We're going to minimize this off our screen. Get rid of this little pop-up menu here. And now we are going to take Photoshop Elements and we are going to just go ahead and close it. We're going to quit. And the reason we did that is you can't rebuild your database with Photoshop Elements open. It's just not going to happen for you. So. What we need to do now is reopen the database. So let's right click on here and edit in external editor. There we go. 
and that is now going to bring that database back up. And as that's building out, see now it's going to build your content and effects. So it's going to build it out for you again. I'm going to uh, retweet uh, that the show is on live now. So that's just building out right now is all that's doing. Uh, it just takes a few minutes to build. Like I said, folks, if you want to call in, you can definitely do so. 724 seven oh one oh nine one one love to hear from you okay we're gonna throw that back out there and just uh, retweet that message put that out Let's try to bring some more viewers online with us um you can never tell here with your viewers on justin tv uh, i was watching a program the other night and the uh it went from 60 to 110 and then dropped back to 60 so we don't know where that spike came from So here we go. Hopefully you guys are following along. Everything's moving along okay. And uh, you actually uh, downloaded uh, some of the stuff here. And um, so just sitting here waiting for this to uh, rebuild itself back out and um, come back up. And then we can follow along some more. I just want to get my number up there on the screen. So that's why I uh, switched the cameras over there just for a minute or so. And... Um, and we'll come back up online. Not if you guys watched uh, any of my videos on Justin TV. I actually have some other stuff on there. I did an iPad weekly yesterday. And uh, I have that up on there. And now once a week I'm planning on doing some kind of computer topics or computer questions. Um, and that show is called uh, Techno Man. And I just picked that because that's my, uh, my uh, nickname on Twitter. It's Techno Man. So... There you have it. Okay, it looks like the database is rebuilt. Maybe. Hasn't came back up yet. That's still working on it. So it's still loading my picture in here. As soon as it does that, then we will uh, talk a little bit about um, how this new action works. Um, I think you'll be pretty interested in it. It. it makes your job makes your life of reflection at least uh, so much easier okay jump back on my screen and hopefully by now you have that um, the uh, the website there hopefully you got that up now I'm just going to uh, take that off uh, of the screen here so we can see what's going on okay so here we have a picture of a butterfly and we are going to make this butterfly into a reflection. Now with this new tool, this new action we just downloaded, it makes it pretty easy to do that. And all we have to do is apply the action. The one thing it's going to say on that website, if you read anything about it on that website is um, basically it's going to tell you that you don't want to duplicate your background. Now, I know we talk about that a lot. We duplicate our background all the time. But you don't want to duplicate your background for this because it's going to create the layers for you. So what you got to do first is come over here on your effects panel up here on the top. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay. And trying to see here. Layer styles, all, filters. Just seeing if it's under layer styles. No, it wasn't there. Definitely wasn't there. I think it was under the filters. We're looking for this one right here. Look where it says DB Mom's Reflection. That's what it's going to say. And it's under, I went to Show Effects. So it's under Effects. Then I went to Show All. That's what I went to. It's just easier to find. 
Then once you find that file, all you do is go ahead and double click it. It's going to start you on a process. That's an action. An action will start you on a process and gradually take you through that process step by step of the way. So it says, welcome to digital photography for mom's reflection action. There are a couple of things that you have to do to make the action run well. So read the messages as it pops up. And it's really nice how he built this. So we'll click next. And now it's going to say, press the shift key. Um, sorry about that. Press the shift key and drag the layer down so that the top of the upside down layer is either just below or just touching the bottom of the right uh, sided upper layer. Okay, that sounds kind of confusing. Basically all this is this folks, watch. It's real easy to do this. We hit continue. I hold my shift key down and I drag this layer down. Right, because this is the upside down layer. And we drag it down a little bit more. We'll drag it down a little bit more, a little bit more. You're looking for the bottom of this other layer. So we just drag it up a little bit until it just touches the other layer. Just like so. Then what I like to do is what I did earlier was it made it look even better was I take this because I want the butterfly to be reflected. So I take this and I just push it up a little bit to get that butterfly up there. Okay. Now the butterfly is reflected and that just looks better that way, I think, anyway. Okay. Once you're done with that, click on the checkbox. Now it's going to give you the next thing you got to do. Select the foreground color and or from the use field of the field dialog box. Kind of does it for you. Watch. We click OK. Use the foreground color. That's what I was telling you. Okay. The thing we didn't do there, we didn't do this part right at all, did we? I missed a step. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, the first thing you got to do here uh, when we go to use this action, we're going to walk back through it is use the color picker and you pick the lowest part of the color here. The reason we do that is we have to get it over here into our foreground color. That's why we need to do that first. Double click and I'm just going to walk back through this. You've seen this. Just hold the shift key. I'm going to bring this down. Down some more. Down some more. And I'm oh, sorry about that guys. You know sometimes it's live video. Uh, and I did practice this. I did do it once. I had somebody email me once to Jack, do you ever practice what you uh, what you what you teach? <laughs> well, yeah. So sometimes it's ad lib, but usually I do practice. Honestly, uh, bring us back up here a little bit. Let's get the uh, guy back up there, the butterfly that we want up there. Um, now in this case, you know, normally I I do all my um, changing proportions. I do everything from the sides. But in this case, we want him scrunched a little bit because it's a reflection. So you want it scrunched up a little bit. Click OK. At that point, now it's going to tell us to use that foreground box. We're going to do that. The foreground color is the green color over there. That's what we're using. Click OK. And now you see it put that proper color in. That's why we had to do the color picking before. Okay, you had to do that. And now it's going to tell you select the gradient tool with the black and white linear gradient, hold down the shift key, click on the bottom of the reflection and draw to the top of the reflection layer. Okay, and the reason we hold our shift key down is because it will make a straight line. We're gonna do this. Now they want the black and white. So click here and you would click on the first one, foreground, back one, right? Black and white. Make sure this one is selected. It's the linear gradient, which it is. Hold your shift key down again and pull straight up to the bottom of the layer and then let it go. And what that does, it darkens it just a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, interesting, I guess, is what that does. And it makes it more look like more of a reflection. Now I'm going to do view 
fit the screen and fit the whole picture on the screen and now you see we do have a reflection of the butterfly the other thing I like to do I added this um, in playing with this tutorial and it's a great action it works really well but this harsh line right here in the middle of these two uh, you can see my mouse right here and uh, maybe I'll bring this up a little bit oh. let me bring my uh, blur tool up my brush and I can probably show you where this is Yeah, it's showing up okay I'm just making sure it's going on the output okay guys okay so right here you want to select your blur tool and just move your mouse oh see that's too much blur uh, let's undo that it's too big you want to make this as subtle as possible so lower your brush size down and just blur right over top of this line here And what you're trying to do there is just kind of blurring that in so that way it's not that harsh of a looking line. All right, you just want to blur that in a little bit. Just something like that. We probably want to click on this layer actually and blur that in. There you go. Like I said, just blur it in a little bit. Play around with it. But you want to make it as uh, least harsh as possible on there um, okay so that is that one okay so that is how we use that action that's how we installed it uh, if you missed any part of that don't worry about it because you can go back this is like a free TiVo show Right? You can go back and watch it on Justin TV again. Um, I also take these and I will post these up on YouTube if you miss any part of it. Don't worry about it. I have a lot of people say, Jack, live shows are great. But if we get there late, we miss something. We can't see uh, what you did. Well, don't worry about that. That's okay. Because like I said, just go in and you can review uh, the, the recorded footage later on. Uh, stick around with us now because that's a great, great thing that you're on board with us here. And you can call in. Um, I know I had some people email me through the week and said, can't wait until that Photoshop Elements class, Jack, because we have a couple questions we want to call in with. Um, so at that point, um, we are going to go ahead and open up the phone lines now to see if we get any calls. Uh, you guys want to call and ring in, even say good morning, good Sunday, um, happy Mother's Day to any moms out there that might be watching the show. And uh, we're glad to have you on board this morning. Hopefully your, uh, your kids are creating you some fabulous pictures today and they're working in Photoshop and making you some uh, beautiful masterpieces of their own. So hopefully uh, that's actually going on. But uh, like I said, if you want to call in, we're here. Um, I try not to force these shows to make them too fast. There's no sense uh, speeding anything up, right? We're here to take our time and learn together. And um, that's what I want you for. I want you on board so you're going to learn with me. Once again, if you want to call in, you can Skype. Um, some people, you, if you want to Skype in, I'd love to get you up on video. Uh, we can have a conversation on video chat, and I can actually bring that video up into the screen. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen web shows, so it's pretty cool. I'd love to try it out. Haven't tried it yet with anybody. Haven't done any video uh, Skyping. But I also bought a Skype in number for those of you who don't want to bother with Skype, and I know there's a lot of you out there. I understand. And you can call that number, though, 724-701-0911. And that rings directly into uh, the studio right here with me. And we can uh, we can talk live. So and everything is set up to be able to do that. So the next tutorial I thought we would talk about is something I, I found this morning. It's, it's a short one. It's not that hard to do. It's called Color Variations. It's just another twist on how to add color to your pictures. And, uh, you know, uh, I thought it was interesting enough to bring to you. This is stuff that these couple uh, tutorials today, if you guys watch my YouTube videos, you'll notice one thing that none of these have ever been done before. I haven't done any of these before, so they're all new. And, and I feel good about that. I want to bring you something new uh, to the table with the live show. I, I think that's important. And hopefully you can follow along. It looks like the screenshots to me and every, everything looks real good. And uh, we do have a phone call coming in here, so we're going to go ahead and take that call. Hey, Bobby. 
with Skype, and I know there's a lot of you out there. I understand. And you can call that number, though, 724 701. Okay. The first thing you have to do there, if you can for me, is turn your speakers down. Uh, studio right here with me. Okay. Can you turn your speakers down? Yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of feedback. And good morning, and welcome to okay. the, welcome to Photoshop Elements Weekly. Hey, this is Jack, and who am I talking to? Yeah, this is Kevin, Jack. I'm here in West Virginia. All right, Kevin. Not too far from us. Um, no, not at all. A lot of great places to take pictures in West Virginia. Actually, I took a ride. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but I did take a ride to uh, Blackwater Falls at one point. Yeah, I've uh, been about by there. Okay. I live, like, toward the middle of the state. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you're yeah, you're a little bit further away from here. So how can I help you out today, Kevin? <laughs> Well, I just wanted to comment on just uh, I think you've got a pretty good show going. I really enjoy watching it. This is the first time I actually got to call in. I would actually catch you on a Sunday. And uh, all the stuff that you uh, know is pretty interesting. I mean, I'm going to ITT in Huntington and uh, into computer networking. So a lot of stuff I've watched on your show has been pretty, uh, pretty informative. Oh, fantastic, Kevin. You know, and it's people like you calling in that makes it so much better. It's It's nice to know. You know, you sit and you do the show, you think, well, am I talking to myself here? Uh, it's nice to know to hear you <laughs> hear you guys actually calling in. And uh, how long have you been in ITT? Uh, I've got, I've, this is my second, end of my second year. i got like one more semester and I'll be out. All right. That's a two-year program, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, hey, I've been doing computer field. <laughs> I've been in the computer field, Kevin, for 25 years, so, um, and I and I still actively do it every day, so. It's a great field. Just always remember, never quit learning. That's a, that's a that's a key. Oh no, you always there's always something to learn in this field. I know that. Oh, you're not kidding. Well, I'm glad you're learning, <laughs> and I'm glad you're learning with us here with the uh, Photoshop Elements. Uh, do you, I guess you currently use Elements? Is that right? That wouldn't be a dumb question, would it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I use it. I'm a avid avid photographer myself, and now so there's two things that got in common with you. That's pretty cool. That's why I enjoy watching your show. Hey, and I started doing another show. I don't know if you caught it this week or not. It was called it's called Techno Man Weekly. It's a weird name, um, and I got to drill down when I'm going to do that one. But that one's just like for for people like you also in the computer field. And you're like, oh, I I want to know about a server or I want to know about a networking switch. Um, that's that's a great venue right. for that. Hey, um, I'm watching one of your shows right now. Is it, uh, it didn't look like I mean because coinciding with what I'm watching. Did you record this one already? Which I think you're doing one on the, which one is it? Oh gosh. Oh the reflection thing. No, I'm, that's live right now. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Yeah, so but, uh Yeah, you're actually watching the live program right uh, now. Um that reflections we just we just finished. Um now sometimes there's a delay from when you're calling me and talking to me and actually Hearing it coming across the computer, there could be a short delay. Yeah, it might be. But yeah, I think you have a pretty good show going. I hope a lot of people catch on to it and watch a little bit more and learn something from you because I'm always learning something when I'm watching it. And it actually, it's helped me out a few of your uh, shows on your Windows server. It helped me out in class. We, we were just doing server, when was it? Probably about last semester, last couple of semesters, I think it was. And then a little trick that you had in server, which was kind of bum fuzzle me while I was in class. <laughs> hey, well, that's that's cool, you know, and I do a lot of interns also where I work, and um, a lot of times they, they you know, what's well, hands-on, but they tell me, oh, we learned more here in three yeah. months than we learned in two years, but but we pound people with hands-on. Yeah. That's, that's how I like to learn, Kevin, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Oh, that's the only way I can learn. We we usually have visual uh, VMware to do, run our server, you know, to practice on and all that, but to me, it's a little tricky doing it on the VMware. I don't know why. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, but you know, and I, and I argue with schools, uh, with colleges, and I also sit on a college board, is that everybody wants to teach with VMs. Uh, and that's great if the whole world was a VM. Um, but, right. You know I mean? You have to get in the rack. You have to get a server. And I don't mean to take it from, away from this Photoshop Elements, because I know we have folks here just to watch Elements and, and Photos. But... Uh, I'm sure we can talk anytime, Kevin. You know what? If you see me on Skype, if you open Skype up and see me on, ring that number, uh, call me, and I'll answer you. Okay. And we'll talk more about I don't servers. have Skype right now, but... <laughs> What's that? 
I said I don't have Skype right now, but I've never used it, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, even if you try a number sometime, if I'm around, I, I usually have my Skype open. I'll talk to you. And, uh, but we can talk for hours. Right. We can talk for hours about servers. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Photoshop. I'm a, I love Photoshop editing. I mean, I learned a lot from watching on that too. So. Okay. Well, I'm it's glad. Great. Hey, I'm glad you called in, Kevin. And uh, by all means, keep watching the show and spread the word around. All right, buddy. I will. Okay, sir. Have a good day in West Virginia. Thank you. You too, buddy. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Okay, very good there, uh, Kevin. I appreciate the call in. That's It's great for people to call and uh, to get that instant feedback that people are out there watching. Um, the only thing I actually I, I keep Justin TV up uh, just to see if anybody's watching, but I don't stream myself anymore because it kills my feed. And what I mean by that is it starts being uh, real sluggish, and you'll see me uh, locking up, so we don't want to do that. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to jump right into this color variations and how that, that tool works. I don't know if you ever used it or not. It's an interesting tool. Um, it's a real short, uh, short training session. And then we'll go into using a layer mask, because in Photoshop Elements 9 now, they gave us the layer mask. In Photoshop 6, 7, 8, we had to kind of fake the layer mask, and you can do that, and it works. I've done it a lot of times. But now we're going to actually um, be able to actually use a real layer mask. It's just there for us to use, and I'll show you how to do that, uh, to put one person into another picture. So hang on there with me, guys. Like I said, sometimes this show will run over a little bit. Um, we got 20 minutes. I don't know if we'll get through both of these in 20 minutes. So if we run over, that's all right. I'm not worried about it. So let me switch back over to my uh, computer here. And we are going to bring up my iPhoto. And we're going to use this picture. Now we use this picture. It's more color. We are going to uh, bring that up in my editor. And now here is the picture we're going to use to work with the color variations is what we're going to work with. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that background image. And remember, we didn't the last time um, because the reason we didn't duplicate that the last time is simply because uh, the tool we were using duplicated it for us so we didn't have to worry about that all right um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to use our color variation tool on this and be able to change the color of this picture and it is under the enhance menu and then we go down to adjust color and then it's down at the bottom, it's called color variations. I'm going to bring that up. Now, here's what you can do with these different ones, and it's interesting to me because they give you the samples right here on the bottom of what your picture, how your picture is going to change. Um, you, so you don't have to look at just the before and after. You can pre see all those. Pre see? <laughs> see all those beforehand how about that maybe I don't know uh, so we can look at these each one of these and if you click on it it's going to change the after picture up here on top you see that just became redder here's some green to make it more green and something like this picture that's probably exactly what we would use is the green for the foliage right that's in this picture all right you can increase the blue we can lighten it. We can decrease red, right? Pull some of the red out of it. Decrease the green. Look, you can see how much that changed. Hopefully, you can see this okay uh, on the screen there. Uh, and like I said, it's best to bring it up and follow along. You know, even if you uh, once you get the tool open, you can shrink your browser or minimize it. I don't know how big your monitors are. And you got darken. Here's darken right there. Now that's midtones. You can also do shadows, and you can work just on the shadows. Okay. 
We can reset the image anytime we want to get it back. Um, highlights, you can highlight some green. Highlight some red. Reset. Uh, or saturation. Now you can either get less saturation, reset, or you can do more saturation. And saturation is based solely on color. Uh, color is where we're saturating. We're either going to give it an abundance of color or less color. Normally when I use saturation, um, and I do what I did in a couple weeks ago there, we, we worked on selective editing, I think I called it, where you can select certain parts and raise your saturation. The reason you do that is you can just pick out the foliage instead of the whole picture. Maybe you want the greens to be really, really green, or maybe you want to take the greens and dye them down a little bit and just show those color uh, balls in the, in the front there, which would be a really nice looking picture also. Now, if we go back to midtones, the only thing I also want to show you with this tool is the adjust color intensity. So you can pull this to the right and you can see here on the samples how uh, different it goes, right? And you can play with this based on whatever you like. Let's face it, folks. Photography is basically your eye, right? You're the artist. So you're picking it out and you're saying what well, I want that picture to look like. And I always teach people in my classes. If you're not there, uh, if, if somebody's not there with you, they don't know what it looked like anyway. So you make it interesting. You make it the shot that you want. Uh, always keep the original because one day you're going to look back and say, what, wonder what that did look like. <laughs> but keep the original because you never know. Let's go ahead and increase the greens. And we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, here's something right here you're going to see. It's going to take the water, it looks like, and also make the water green. Click OK. Now, see what it did? Look at that overall picture. The water actually turned greener. This green ball got bright green. All the green balls in the in the uh, boat here all became really bright green. So uh, you got to watch the tool. It's better if you leave it set in the middle or even take it back a little bit. Don't let it get too intensive. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to undo that. Um, just real quick, I'll show you. Uh, since I mentioned it, I'm going to make sure I show you this. I'm going to use my... Uh, quick selection tool Get plus and we're just going to select this uh, the green foliage in the background alright the best we can we'll get that looks pretty good the green over here we'll try to select just like so and we'll bring it down here a little bit like that little bit here okay now the reason I wanted to show you this is to show you the effects of saturation on a selected area all right and how we can actually saturate just that area because we selected it so if we go to adjust color and we go to hue and saturation this is one of my favorite tools in any Photoshop version I've ever used so we want to take that, and you see now we're not changing the watercolor. Look how green we can make the background, right? Look how green we can make that. It's so nice that we can just work with the green. Uh, we're going to saturate it up some more. Again, always remember, make your picture believable. You don't want to make it look like it was drawn in uh, hand-painted. I mean, at times we do that, but see, now I just blew it out there, oversaturated, right? Or basically, what did I do there? Overexposed it. Click OK. And now you can see how much better that foliage looks, but we didn't mess up the water at all on the bottom. So that is how that works out. Okay, guys, we're going to give you a cross shot of the desk here. And I'm going to take just a uh, three or four minute break, fill my coffee cup up, and come back up. So hang in there with me. Don't go anywhere. Uh, maybe go fill your beverage at the same time and uh, come back and sit down. And then we will do this last uh, short lesson of using a layer mask to relocate people or objects. I think you'll be pretty excited about that one. So hang in there with me. Just give me a couple minutes uh, as a break there, and I'll be right back. Uh, so I'll see you in a second.
Okay, very good. Now, got that uh, fresh cup of coffee going there. Hopefully you got your beverages. Okay. Um, a lot of email questions also. Um, we have a lot of email questions coming through. Uh, oops. Okay. All right, guys. I made it back here. I did make it back. I want to uh, thank everybody for hanging in there with me for that short uh, break there, you know. Got to run every now and then, fill that coffee cup up. It's always a good thing to have that uh, going on there. And we're going to get on to the next lesson. But before we do, I don't know if anybody else wanted to call in. If you have any questions, uh, the phone lines are open, as always. So uh, we'll give you a minute there and let you uh, call into the show. And uh, I don't know if anybody else is using any other photo editors out there. If you can maybe let me know that. Um, I understand that... Picasa came out with a new one, I guess, version 3 or 3.5. or, And I haven't played with it for a while. I was thinking this morning I need to do that, but I haven't. I'm too wrapped up in Photoshop Elements and everything it can do for me that I don't, don't really need that many other photo editors. But Okay, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and get on to the next lesson here and um, get you guys moving on because I don't uh, want to bore anybody and... Uh, as you guys seen uh, when I get on the phone there, I can I can talk for a while. So, um, but we want to go ahead and move on. So the number is on the screen there. If you want to jot that down, if you have a question, um, but we will come back to that. And right now that we're gonna go back to the desktop uh, and to the Photoshop Elements program. Let's go ahead and do that now. And we're gonna go ahead and start. Um, just. Uh, Rechecking the screen here. And then we're going to start uh, to do this last lesson where I think you're going to be interested in. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool lesson. Um, I had a good time with it this morning. Okay, and what we're going to learn how to do now is how to properly use a layer mask. Or what would you use a layer mask for? Well, I found a great way to use it this morning and just for relocating people and not having to do any selections at all. And it does look more realistic. Um, I do not have the walk-on pad out here, or the wake-on pad. Um, it, it would probably make it easier to do this uh, one if you have one, uh, but you don't need it. I'll use the mouse just to show you that you, you don't need the, that device. Um, I purchased that device quite a while ago, off of probably off of eBay, and I probably bought it used just to have one. But uh, you don't need it. I mean, you'll, you'll be fine without it, so don't even worry about that. But um, if you do get one, let me know you got it, and uh, maybe we'll learn some more about the, the Wacom or Wacom pads. I guess I got a new one now. It's called a bamboo. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. So I'm going to need a couple pictures we're going to work with. Um, I actually did this morning. I did it with this one this morning. Oh, no, I didn't either. Didn't you go to select? Get rid of everything off of there. Like I said, you could do Photoshop editing. I could, I could do this all day. Man, I tell you, what a great program, and uh, what great fun, you know, and how creative your mind can be. You can sit and just play and try things, and ah, it blows you away. I tell you what. Okay. You would think by now Photoshop should be calling me up saying, Jack, we need to offer you tons of cash, uh, because you promote our products so well, but. It's just it's a good product and I believe in it, you know, so I don't mind teaching it because I enjoy it. Um, what we're going to look for now is I need to find a picture. Um, and I don't know if I can. I need to find a picture and we're going to put somebody in that picture. Um, so um, I might have to just use what I used. <clears throat> um, well, maybe not. It's a little darker than I want to use here, but I think I'll use this picture. Hopefully that opens in my editor. Um, I had trouble with some of my pictures in photo in iPhoto. I don't know if anybody else has ever had these troubles before. But um, the picture comes up as an exc exclamation point. 
Um, I don't know if you ever had that before or not, but I tell you what, uh, it almost looks like the, the thumbnail is dislocated from the actual uh, full graphic or full picture, full size picture or something. I don't know where it went. So that's crazy, but I may have to re import some of those. Okay, now we're going to need another picture here. And what we're going to do now is um, uh, I used this one this morning. We'll do this one again. It's probably easier, right, to use the same picture that I used on this morning. And uh, now this is also going to be a little bit of, of learning in layers again. I know I, I pound layers into everybody that I ever do these videos for. I pound layers. The reason I pound layers into you is because layers is so important to understand. Um, everything or every advanced thing you're going to do in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements is based solely on layers. So that's something that we have to work with here is layers. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this entire picture here. I'll pull this whole picture up right here. I'm going to edit and copy. And then I'm going to go on to this other picture because I want two layers here. So I'm going to do edit and I'm going to paste it here. And that's going to give me that new layer with this new picture sitting in it. Now as you notice something that's a little smaller than my other picture. In this picture I want to duplicate that so I'll do a Control J or Command J. And people say, Jack, why do you say that? Control J or Command J? I don't know what you're talking about. If you're on a Macintosh or if you're on a iMac or the uh, any of the Mac line, the Apple line, it's Command. On the keyboard there's a Command key. It's Command J. Now if you're on a PC, any PC, there's a Control key on your keyboard. It'll be Control J. That's why we say the difference like that. And I know you hear in a lot of shows and I don't think anybody's ever explained it. Like, and people's like, what does that mean? Well, there you go. That's what it means. Uh, so you guys are okay now. What I want to do with this picture, this layer one, is I think I want to resize it. So I'll grab it by the edges and I'll pull it out. It just makes it easier if it's the same size as that other picture. Pull it down. Copy it over top of the other picture. There you go. Just like so. All right. Now that we have that set up, this picture, this background copy, you want under this picture. Okay. Now the reason is this picture is we're trying, to, we're going to take this and we're going to try to reveal something that's under it. Remember, that's how layers work. Think about this for a second here. Let me bring this back up. I don't mean to pound this, but this is just in case there's anybody new from last week. Layers are just like this. So this piece of paper on the bottom, if we cover something up with this piece of paper on the bottom, right, it's going to cover it up. And the way I always explain this is tracing paper. If you take tracing paper, remember as kids, when we were all kids, we would lay a piece of tracing paper on top, and we would take that tracing paper and trace out what was on the bottom, a comic or whatever, because we could see through it. But ordinarily with layers, unless you have a transparent part of your picture, you're not going to see through it, right? You have to make the top of the picture transparency. And I did some YouTube videos a while back. If you guys want to go back through those archives and check it out, you'll see that the um, you'll see that I was able to uh, do some layering. And layering itself is when you take pieces of pictures and put them on top of each other. And the way I was able to do that was I created some transparency so you can see under it. So in this one, it's kind of going to work the same way because a mask will unmask. It's not going to transparent, but it's definitely going to be able to, you're going to be able to paint on something and get to that bottom layer is what we want to do on this, uh, this lesson, get to the bottom layer. Now, the way I found out to do that, it's very simple. We have our layer one, bring this back up. We have our layer one right here and we have our background. Click this off. This is the background, right? This is where the female standing there. And we're going to take her and pull her into the other picture without using any selection tools. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's a nice way of doing things. Because we do like to move people around. Some people making selections are a pain in the backside, right? Because it's hard to select. Um, and uh, it's hard to get that perfect selection. So let's go ahead and click on that layer one. 
and go down to your layer mask it says add a layer mask now if you don't have a layer mask don't get too excited right because if you have version 6 7 I believe 8 you can click on here and I used to use hue and saturation or levels you click on that and what you would do at that point is don't change any of your levels you just want to use this mask right here is what you want to use so that's how you would use that one and this would be click on the mask and you can do the same thing that we're going to be doing here in 9 and we delete that layer mask because you see look it says layer mask delete that I'm going to delete that layer All right. but we're on this layer we're going to click on layer mask now you see what it allows you to do now with a true layer mask it puts it right on with that actual picture because it knows you want to do something with that picture click on the layer mask and you look over here your foreground and your background color are white and black and this sometimes you're going to be painting on white and some people this is confusing it was really hard for me to figure out I just I guess I drilled it into my head so much that I just have it now but if I flip this you want to paint with black to reveal and white to hide black to reveal white to hide and I hope this works because like I said it was a trial this morning I'm gonna pick a paintbrush tool and we're going to simply go over here you're gonna figure out now if you want to figure out where this uh, female is just click that layer off and look so we're gonna be starting right about here okay starting right about here somewhere and as we paint what happens is we're revealing underneath probably want to make your brush size bigger use the right bracket key makes this a little bit easier to do so what you what are you doing you know people ask me all the time about layers and masks wow where'd her hair go that's a crazy picture a little darker than I'd want to do this with but that's all right it's 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 a tutorial it's a training it's good to do it with and people say Jack what the heck is going on um, very simply we're painting black on the mask so we're taking that mask which is linked to that foreground picture it's linked to it and we're basically being able to bring this person in the bottom layer right up into this picture itself by using that mask don't let it get too confusing folks because it's not it's not that confusing um, you know, a lot of people put too much I tell my wife a lot of times sometimes you put too much thought into something don't do that just follow along and uh, all you got to do is you'll paint this person right in don't worry if you make a mistake I'm gonna show you how to fix that in just a minute so we'll paint this person in all of a sudden the person is no longer at the zoo she is now in the flower garden right that's where we put her so there you go now she's in the flower garden now with that said what we're going to do here is flip this over okay flip your foreground your background color let's just flip that like that and now you're going to paint with white and now when you paint with white let's slow this down a little bit we're going to paint with white and you'll see that will start to hide everything behind her And sometimes, you know, you look at this, you say, ah, it's about the same selection. Well, yeah, it, because sometimes it gets a little tedious, too. But I think there's more room for error here uh, because it's blending in so well. that. Uh, so you see now we're pulling that, that foreground back up and on top of a picture here. So we go here. Just like this. Like I said, it works easier with my Wacom board, um, with the stylus there, and be able to hold that pen more like a paintbrush. But you'll get the general idea. And I try to do everything like you guys will have. I, I think about the equipment you have at your house, and that's how I like to teach these videos. I, you don't have to buy anything to watch my videos, right? Just like that. Fix her hair up a little bit. Put a little shoes there. And again, we're just painting with white is all we're doing at this point hand uh, a lot of you may say that doesn't look realistic where she's standing but we're gonna go with that that's the shot that we had and we're gonna just let that go on and uh, that is how you would use a layer mask 
to transform somebody from one place to the other. So once again, folks, the phone lines are open. If you have any questions about that tutorial, uh, anything that you missed or didn't quite understand, you can call me and uh, we'll look at it here together. And uh, it might be a question somebody else is having. So if you want to call in, by all means, you can call at the number right there on the screen, 724-701-0911. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Or whatever uh, else you might be thinking on this. Uh, looks like it's a gorgeous Sunday, a gorgeous Mother's Day today. Um, I know after this show, I'm going to be uh, doing some traveling here to go see my mother. I think that's important, so I'm going to uh, take that drive. Um, it was very interesting because I had a lot of people this morning say, uh, Jack, are you going out to breakfast with uh, these people or these people? Or going out to breakfast for Mother's Day uh, with, with um, your mom? And I said, I can't make breakfast because I have a show to do. Um, so that's this show anyway, absolutely, I'm dedicated to be here. Um, my wife said, wonder if we go on vacation. I said, don't worry. Don't worry about that, hon. We can take a laptop. I can take a microphone with me, and uh, I could broadcast wherever I got Wi-Fi, right? Hopefully. Uh, she said, that's not going to happen. So, But the vacation's not coming up, in, at least in, we know, until about August. Um, so I'll be uh, gone for a week in August. But you guys will definitely know ahead of time when that's going to take place. Um, I just want to let you know that I am dedicated to this Photoshop Elements uh learning session every Sunday morning. I've been asked by a few people, uh, is it the best time slot? I'm trying to figure that out. Is it the best time slot? I don't know. Um, I picked it, I guess, because it works for me, but then I started thinking about churches and everything like that, and I, I like people to be out at church and be able to watch the show. Um, like I said, thank goodness it does get tivo here for us automatically, right? gets recorded so you guys can watch it later uh, and pick up anything you missed. And also, I'm going to... Uh, do some editing i'll put it together take out the short break that i took and uh, i'll post that video to youtube so it'll be up on my youtube channel also so if you guys don't have any other questions there um we're going to as always let the feed go a little bit because i found at one time there was a little delay on my feed and uh, i broke the broadcast and it cut off the last five minutes of the recording so some people missed some stuff there i mean so that's why I try not to end it, edit and be like, oh, got to go now. Nah, I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do here at this point is bring up uh, just some music uh, like I normally do at this point. Uh, you guys don't have to stick around for that. I do appreciate everybody coming. It, believe me, it very much, I, I tell you this on my YouTube videos, uh, it very, very much humbles me to know that people stop by to see these live shows um, and to visit with me, you know, I enjoy doing this stuff, and I like sitting here, and every time I teach you something new, it, it reteaches me what I might have known or something I might uh, something new to the to the whole program there. So, so hopefully you enjoyed this program. Once again, this is Photoshop Elements Weekly. It does air from 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 11, um, to about 11 o'clock, sometimes a little longer, but... Um, we're here for you, and this show has been recorded. So if you're just joining us, I'm very sorry there that the uh, the program has pretty much ended. Um, so hopefully you'll join us next week. Remember, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'll be here for you. And um, also I'll be catching you through the week. So if you follow me here, if you just click on the follow button on Justin TV when I go live, you'll know about it. You get an email right away, email notification, hey, Jack's Tech Corner is now live, and uh, that's the way you want to be notified. And I also, anytime I go live, I do start uh, putting Twitter messages out. So if you follow me on Twitter, my Twitter name is Technoman. Uh, so that's the way you can follow me there. So there you have it. Uh, if you want to email me your questions, by all means, you can do that. Send them to Jack's Tech Corner at gmail.com. Jack's Tech Corner at gmail.com. Um, and this week, I didn't play the advertisements. I'm going to run that now before I start this music clip, just so we get them into the video. So let's go ahead and just run those real quick. Green Screen Wizard, for all your green screening needs. From standalone software to plugins, to the green screens themselves. Ken is the man you want to go to. Longtime photographer and programmer, 
Ken has pulled both of his talents together to create the easiest green screen processes. And one and one hosting services. Do you need a personal website or do you have a business looking for a company with dependability and support, yet at a reasonable cost not to break the bank? One and one does it all. Websites, domain names, email services, and even remote servers. To order any of these products, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and click on the graphics on the left side of the page. Now, back to learning. Okay, very good. Um, so we are back to learning here. And uh, huh, that one actually worked out okay this time. Didn't lose my audio. Okay, guys, so like I said, I'm going to uh, throw some music on there and uh, get you going with that. And we will uh, see you next week on Photoshop Elements Weekly. So long for now from Jack's Tech Corner.